Hey guys, my name's Dale, and you're watching Think Fact. Now the concept of humans going extinct may seem a bit far-fetched. I mean, there's 7 billion of us, and that seems pretty far away from extinction. Though when most of us think of extinction, we tend to limit it to an entire organism. The dodos went extinct, the brontosaurus went extinct, the mammoths went extinct, Neanderthals went extinct. But extinction is not always limited to just the entire species. For example, dogs are obviously not extinct, but there are quite a few dog breeds that are extinct. For example, the English White Terrier no longer exists. It is completely gone. But its existence did pave the way for two other dog breeds that are extremely popular today, the Boston Terrier and the Bull Terrier. Without the English White Terrier, they wouldn't exist, and the English White Terrier's genes live on through them. Now, humanity as we know it has quite a few different ethnicities within it. All of them range in population, and in most cases, quite dramatically. I mean, the majority of the world's population comes from the most successful ethnic groups. But where there's success, there's failure. And failure can be found in the groups that just were unsuccessful for a number of reasons. So when you think of the question for this video, I want you to think of it in two ways. Are there people that are going extinct, and are people in general going extinct? And I'll try to enlighten you and give you interesting thoughts on both of them. So let's get educated. Humans that have gone extinct, in terms of ethnicity, tend to not be thought about that often. One of the most famous extinctions in history is the one about the aboriginals to Tasmania. So there are no full-blooded Tasmanians left. All of them either die to disease, war, or just disappeared due to intermarriage with the colonials. The last full-blooded Tasmanian to die was Truganini. She died at the end of the 1800s, and I would invite anybody to read more about her. The story is actually quite depressing. And even less fortunate groups, like the Caribbean tribe, the Taino, who much like the other Caribbean tribes, had to deal with the absolute brunt of colonialism in the Americas, and they themselves died out much earlier than even the Tasmanians. Being stuck on small islands with disease, war, and lots of forced labor took an absolutely devastating toll on their populations. The Taino no longer exist today, but much like the Tasmanians, they did have intermarriage with the colonials and their genes survived from there. Most notably in what is now Puerto Rico, actually. An estimated 60% of all Puerto Ricans have DNA which can be traced back to the Taino, even though the Taino themselves are completely gone. And not a lot is known about the Taino, and circumstances like this are very common among islands. In recent times, a completely unique ethnic group that the entire world has been watching die off, with very few members left, are the Great Andanese People. Living on the Andaman Islands off of India, there are only 52 people left that are part of this ethnicity, and only three that are full-blooded. The Andamanese people are predicted to go completely extinct within the next hundred years or so due to them not being able to wed other Andamanese people. Instead, if they want to have a relationship and children, having to go outside their communities. So it won't be long before their entire identity is just gone. And occurrences like this are not as rare as you may think either. In Siberia, countless tribes have been going extinct over the past hundred years. In 2002 alone, there were 30 tribes in Siberia that had less than 100 people within them. And 10 years later, in 2012, even less of them registered due to them simply disappearing. And very similar things have been seen within Africa, South America, and Polynesia. So what about bigger populations then? Well, pretty much any group of people that are a minority within a larger group of people are at extreme risk. This is due to intermarriage, especially with societies nowadays becoming much more acceptable towards this. Small populations within larger populations tend to always be absorbed. It could take a hundred years, it could take a thousand years, but it's statistically what is most likely going to happen. Probably the biggest group in the world that are at massive risk of being displaced are the Native Americans, ranging from northern Canada all the way to southern Argentina. Now, the Americas have a population of almost a billion people, and out of that, only 50 million people register themselves as being Native American. But that number is skewed due to that including people who are not full-blooded natives. So, the actual number is much lower than that. Native Americans in the United States only make up 1% of the population, which is about 3 million people. But of that 3 million people, less than 1 million of them are full-blooded Native Americans. And they're at constant risk. 
probably what is the second largest group of people to have the possibility to be completely displaced are the 700,000 aboriginals to the Australian continent. But that also includes a lot of people of mixed ancestry. Though they take up a much larger local population than the Native Americans do, due to the Australian continent only having 35 million people, they too are at risk. And those two are probably the biggest examples. But there are still numerous groups that are at risk of being displaced. Another massive group are the Native Hawaiianers, with only 100,000 people claiming full Hawaiian heritage. But it's not only Western countries that this is a problem in. Japan has a native population of people called the Inu. They are the original inhabitants of the Japanese Isles being physically and culturally different than the much larger Japanese population. Though Japan has officially reported their numbers to be about 25,000 people. Though some estimates are much larger, they themselves are at massive risk too. So all in all, are there people going extinct? Yes. Different people have gone extinct, different people are in danger of going extinct, and one day, we all will be extinct. So then, what about people in general going extinct? Do keep in mind that it was only 250,000 years ago when the first humans actually showed up. In the next 250,000 years, or even less, it is very possible that a new species could develop out of us. I mean, think about it. If we one day have the ability to travel the galaxy and colonize other planets, prolonged isolation can cause adaptations to start existing. Much like how Africans look different than Caucasians, who look different than East Asians, who look different than Indians, Indians, who look different than Australian Aboriginals, who look different than Native Americans. We, just like every other organism that is separated from one another for prolonged periods of time, will adapt new features. It's just that we as humans did not have it happen long enough for us to develop into new species. But historically, humans have coexisted with other organisms within the genus Homo. I mean, we existed with Neanderthals and Homo erectus at the same time once. We interacted with each other especially Neanderthals, and our descendants are very likely to develop into species of their own, all existing at the same time. Everything on Earth has survived as long as it has because it's adapted. When the circumstances change, the offspring need to change or they die. And with it becoming extremely likely that we'll have complete control of our genetics one day, there's a big possibility that we'll change our bodies and make them be suitable for different planets. Bigger planets with more gravity would probably require more bulk, where smaller planets would require less just for example. So even though you may have thought throughout this video that we need to just rally up these people and start putting them in breeding programs, which is an absolutely horrible idea, so stop thinking that. I mean, you can't just force intelligent organisms, oh, you could, but don't, don't do that, it's bad. Don't force them to have kids with each other. Because in the end, it's up to them if they feel like they need to be saved or if they just feel like we as a species, as humans, really is all what matters. And in the end, trying to prevent Something that's inevitable is pointless. But the very fact that we are alive today shows how successful of a species we are. And that's only because we've adapted and changed. We change to get to where we are now, and we'll keep changing to get to where we need to go. But for now, we're all human, and that is the most important thing to remember. You're all human, so stick together. So my question for you guys is, the next species that develops out of humans, our descendants, what kind of adaptations do you think they should have? I'd love to know what you guys think. So with all that said and done, my name's Dale, you're watching Think Fact, and remember, never stop learning, and in this case, thinking. If you like my videos, please stay in tune for more. More videos on the facts that almost everybody missed.